So I'm here with my good buddy, Sam Myers from Retrotech. Brian, good and, to see you. Uh, yeah, good to see you too, yeah. buddy. And uh, we're just going to be talking a little bit about some of the stuff that we've written about recently on HVAC School. We're here at International Builder Show in Orlando, Florida, 2022. And um, it's always good to kind of see some HVAC stuff represented here. We, we were talking a little bit about how HVAC equipment interacts with the envelope and some of the different ways of thinking about that. Because I think a lot of technicians, they focus on the duct work, they think about getting the ducts the right size, they think about, you know, maybe even total system airflow if they're really being thoughtful, but maybe they don't think about the envelope as a whole. Sure. You know, when we're looking at the big picture of things, I mean, the building envelope is a part of the HVAC system. It contains all of the conditioned air that we're working to get to a certain temperature or a certain humidity. So that's the container for all of that. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to say that that's not a part of the HVAC yeah. system. The HVAC system, depending on how leaky certain ducts are, whether it's on the supply or return side, is gonna push and pull on certain parts of that building envelope. Yeah. So say we have a bedroom that's maybe being, it's getting more air than it should, and we shut the bedroom door and it's getting overpressurized. And if that air doesn't really have a way to get back to the return, that room is going to, again, overpressurize. And then if it's leaky, it's going to push that conditioned air out the, uh, outside of the envelope. Right. So it's going to amplify the leakage of that a little bit more. Yep. Yep. So we want to have a way to balance that house out. Yep. We want that air to be able to return back to the, back to the blower uh, so it'll keep all of those rooms at an even pressure so that the house isn't going to leak more than it would otherwise. Yeah. Because again, we think so much about leaking ducts being this major problem, especially in, in certain climates, we're really focused on that, keeping the ducts from leaking. And we know that if you have, say for example, supply ducts that are leaking into the unconditioned space or outside the envelope, then that's gonna result in negative pressure inside the structure. Exactly. So we're, we're keenly aware of that. Yeah. Or if there's return ducts that are leaking in the attic, then that's gonna cause you know negative pressure outside the structure, which is gonna lead to positive. So you're gonna have losses. So we're keenly aware of those aspects of it, but what we don't think about sometimes is, is if you have a room that is getting too much air put into that room and then not enough into another, meaning there's imbalanced pressures, sure. that that also results in a very similar dynamic. Yeah, and it's such an easy thing to check. I mean, if you already have a blower door or a duct tester system or a high precision manometer, shut the door, toss the tube underneath and just yep. see what it's doing. Yep. Let the system run and then see what that pressure difference is. Yeah, with the equipment running. With the equipment running, exactly. shut the door, throw the tube underneath and just see. I think it's one of the most underrated tests that technicians really fail to do when they're looking at, you know, what is the, what's the issue with comfort here? Why do I have, for example, in our market, why do I have this high humidity condition in this space? Well, if you have a room that's going under negative pressure for whatever reason, because of imbalance or duct leakage or whatever, then that's gonna result in air being drawn in often from outside the attic, which is the worst of all in our market. I mean, the attic is the absolute worst that we deal with. Right. Um, and that results in latent issues, it re results in discomfort and all kinds of other problems. Right. Yeah, and one example too, I mean, I, I live in a humid area, I live in Wilmington, North Carolina, and we had a house that we, uh, we tested last year that, you know, we did the blower door test, we did a thermal scan, we saw that there was a, a corner here that was very leaky, but uh, they were complaining about humidity in this room. And so we shut the door, we saw that it was way negative, and then we learned at some point an HVAC contractor along the way said, okay, I'll fix this, we'll put a big return in here. Right. But it drew that room about five pascals negative. Right. And then they had a bath fan in the master bath that would kick on and then draw it down to eight. Right. So yeah, we had to just, all we had to do is damper down that return and bring it more even and then those humidity issues exactly. went away. And that comes to that, that concept that a lot of people have that you can't oversize returns. People say that, in fact, I think I've said that like 50 zillion times if I counted it, but that means overall. You, can, you can't have too much o overall return for the system, but you sure. can have too much zonal return in yeah, a particular a area. Room. Exactly, that's drawing that down to negative pressure. Exactly. When I first heard this, I was like, okay, I've got a manometer on my truck, and I use it for gas pressure, and I use it for checking static pressure in my air conditioner. So I'm gonna take a tube, I'm gonna throw it under the door, I'm gonna see what I get, but I wasn't finding anything. So what was I doing wrong? Well, it's gotta be a high resolution manometer. That's the key here. We're talking about a few Pascals and there's roughly 250 pascals in one inch of water. So we're talking about very small increments of pressure Tiny that have a big impact. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And again, like even when we do something as extreme as a blower door test, we're pulling it down to 50 pascals, that's mm -hmm. still not even one inch of water column. Like exactly. this is a tiny amount of pressure, even with a super extreme test, like a blower door where you're pulling that entire space down to negative 50 pascals. And so in those cases, obviously, we're gonna see pretty massive amounts of leakage. But in the case of you know just this test, it's going to even be less than that. So you have to have a really good manometer to do that. Absolutely, and it's it's got to be accurate. It's got to be at that that high resolution to be able to pick that stuff up and be reliable. Yeah. 
So you guys did a great article uh, on the HVAC School website, which you can find just by searching your name, Sam Myers or Jenry Garcia. That's an excellent article on this exact topic. You're going to be at the symposium talking about a lot of the similar stuff coming up here soon, which will be, you know, live streamed out all over the place. Absolutely. Uh, Jenry and I will be presenting on that topic together. We've got some examples from the field. So yeah, yeah, excellent. It'll be fun. Now, talk quickly uh, just before we wrap up here. What what instruments do you guys have that are going to help? diagnose this problem? What are the actual tools and instruments that you need in order to do this? Yeah, so of course the high resolution manometer that we were talking about. And if you have a blower door or a duct tester kit, it's that same manometer that comes with that. Um, the blower door itself is a great tool, especially when you combine it with a thermal imaging camera. Yeah. Um, the guys at Hike Micro are here. They've got a really cool new camera coming out soon that's in a really good price range that has a high resolution. Yeah, I just saw that. Yeah, yeah. Really incredible tool. Yeah. yeah. So really what that does is uh, the blower door kind of serves as an amplifier for the camera, especially if you have a good delta T between indoors and out, yeah. uh, to be able to see where these points are failing. So if you use a blower door and a thermal camera, you got to have enough delta T to be able to see what's going on. The right. blower door serves as the amplifier for the camera. But uh, until you really get in there and look, I mean, there might be some spots that are easy to fix. I mean, a lot of the areas that we see in homes that are really leaky are at the bottom and the top, right. um, especially attics, if there's chases going through there. So sometimes those can be easy fixes. Awesome. Yeah, yeah it's really nice talking to you, man. Yeah, it's always, good, always to you. good to see you. We'll see you again always. at the symposium. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing. You can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.